What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series today we are opening up a pack of 2012 corset uh, obviously because this is a corset uh, as we go through and hopefully figure out what our first round pick will be uh, it is going to be a bit of a lower powered set so just a heads up uh, corsets tend to be that way of course that's not a surprise but uh, we'll be looking at things from that scope uh, I also just want to mention we're only a few episodes away from our 300th crack a pack that's kind of insane uh, I did go ahead and order a few like a little bit higher value packs uh, just so we can do maybe even that whole week just do a little bit more of a powerful uh, a week of cracker packs that might be kind of fun uh, stuff that we don't normally get to open so I'm pretty excited about that so if you are please make sure to leave a like and all that stuff of course but we'll go through this our first card here merfolk looter is a one one for one in a blue you can tap it draw a card and then discard a card this is very, very powerful. Uh, being able to cycle through your deck uh, on a creature in particular is very, very nice. If you can get one or two loots off of this, it just means that you're going to be fixing your draws a little bit better, hopefully getting a little bit more value out of each one of them, uh, and then be able to set up for dealing with the opponent's threats or just deploying your own. Uh, Merfolk Looter enables all that. It's very, very efficient. Uh, and you get to leave it up as a blocker if you need be. Obviously, it's not going to trade off with too much, but it's not a bad first pick. Uh, I don't think we'll end up at that as our first pick, but it is still a good card. Uh, Skywinder Drake is a 3-1 for two and a blue. It has flying, and it can block only creatures with flying. Uh, actually not too bad. Uh, that three power is pretty good in the air, and so if you're in a spot where your opponent just doesn't have very many flyers, this is going to be getting in for three a turn. Like, that's pretty good. Obviously, it is going to trade off most of the time. Uh, if they do have a flyer, literally any flyer is going to be able to trade off with it. Uh, but you're probably going to be able to trade up a little bit, uh, which will be kind of nice. So I like it. It's not amazing. Uh, definitely like the looter better, but it is an evasive early game flyer, which is always nice. Excuse me. Uh, pacifism. Uh, is an enchant creature for one and a white, and the enchanted creature can't attack or block. This is just a really, really good, uh, efficient way of dealing with your opponent's creatures. Uh, that doesn't take them off the field, obviously. It's not hard removal, but it just means that they can't swing in, which in a core set is very, very important because a lot of times the big bombs are nice. Like, they're good just because they have a lot of power and toughness. They're not amazing for their abilities usually there is caveats to that obviously but pacifism pacifism excuse me deals with them in a very efficient way for only two mana that's pretty awesome uh i think honestly that has to beat out the looter as much as i like it this is just such an efficient removal spell that it's very hard to pass up uh fire breathing uh is an enchant creature for one red very classic card uh if you pay one red the enchanted creature gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn and you can of course do that as many times as you'd like uh, because this is very low investment just to play this card, I'm actually more okay with it, uh, especially in a core set where removal is a bit more sparse. Uh, I kind of am okay with a card like this in a very aggressive red deck. Generally speaking, I don't like enchant creatures when they're used as a buff to your own stuff, uh, just because they open yourself up for that two for one. And I still am a little hesitant. I don't love this card, especially not more than pacifism, but... It isn't bad. It's definitely something you can run if you're in, in, a, in a really aggressive like red strategy for sure. Uh, Slaughter Cry uh, is an instant for two and a red. Target creature gets plus three plus zero and gains first strike until the end of the turn. This is just a fairly expensive combat trick. It's not super efficient, uh, but for three mana, you do get plus three, uh, plus zero, and then first strike, which is fine. Uh, I would play it if I was in a red deck. Uh, it's not the most amazing thing in the world, but it's not super exciting as a first pick either. Definitely not something I'm picking now, but it's fine. You can definitely run it. Uh, it's just, you kind of need to be in that, that color before you want to take combat tricks for sure. Uh, Lava Axe is a sorcery for four and a red, and it deals five damage to target player. Very straightforward card, an old card that we've seen a lot of actually. Um, 
I've found that these are like semi okay. You don't want too many of them because if you flood out on lava axes in the early turns, you're just not doing anything. <laughs> Uh, but nugging somebody for five damage could be the difference between winning the game and losing it. So honestly, to have access to maybe one or two of these is like a finisher in a red deck. I'm okay with, uh, but again, it's not a reason to be in that deck. It's definitely not a first pickable card. Uh, Frost Breath is an instant for two and a blue. Tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Uh, this is a very good tempo play. It's very, very solid. Uh, it's not the most amazing card in the world, but in a blue deck, this is exactly the kind of thing you want to be doing. Uh, tap down the opponent's creatures, make it difficult for them to, to, to move forward with their game plan or deal damage to you. Absolutely perfect. Not as good as pacifism because pacifism is closer to harder removal, uh, whereas this is just a solid tempo play, but it is still a powerful card. If you're in blue, you'll want that. Uh, Zombie Goliath is a 4-3 for 4 and a black vanilla creature and not very exciting. Uh, the only reason to take something like this is for curve consideration, and it's really not even good at 5. 4-3 uh, for 5 is pretty bad, even in a core set, so not a very exciting card. Definitely one that I would just look over as much as possible. <clears throat> uh, Harbor Serpent is a 5-5 five, five for 4 and 2 blue. It has Island Walk. So as long as the defending player controls an island, it's basically unblockable, which is nice. Uh, but it can't attack unless there are five or more islands on the battlefield. Generally speaking, that's going to be pretty easy to do. You're in a blue deck if you're playing this. Uh, I find it to be okay, but not amazing. Uh, the random upside is great, but it is random. You don't know what you're going to be against. Excuse me. Uh, and paying six mana for a 5-5 five five is a little bad. It's not terrible, but it's not amazing. Um, and so... It's very dependent on what you're up against. I definitely would take pacifism over it, but if you were desperate for a blue finisher, I guess this is an okay one. Uh, our first uncommon here is Worm's Tooth. Uh, it's two mana for an artifact, and whenever you, uh, whenever a player casts a green spell, you may gain one life. Uh, because this is every player, it's much better than it would be if it was just you. Uh, however. It is random. You don't know if you're going to be up against a green deck. Obviously, you put it in a, a deck that you're running a lot of green in, and that's okay. But it is just kind of random life gain. I would prefer to have something a little bit more aggressive at two, uh, just like a solid two drop. Even just a Grizzly Bears would be cool. Um, but maybe having access to this in a sideboard is a really, really good way to go. Just to prevent some lo life loss throughout the game and things like that if you're against an aggressive deck. Probably pretty good there, but in general, I don't think it's better than pacifism for sure. Uh, Demon's Horn is the exact same thing, but for black spells. And really, the same argument holds up, so I'd much rather have this as a sideboard option, but probably not something that I will play right out. Uh, well, same argument. Celestial Purge, uh, an instant for one and a white. Exile, target black or red permanent. This is a hugely, hugely powerful card against black or red. Obviously, it does absolutely nothing in any other circumstance. Very, very good sideboard card. If you're in white and there's no other picks that are just going to be main board picks, definitely, definitely want to have access to this. It's going to be fantastic to be able to use this against a black or red deck, but obviously not a main board card and not first pickable for that reason. Uh, our rare is Drowned Catacombs, so it's a land, uh, it taps for black or, uh, or blue, excuse me, but it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an island or a swamp. These dual lands, uh, these like, I, I guess they're called check lands, I believe, uh, but regardless, they're very, very good to have, uh, if you are in this color combo, or if you're maybe just splashing one of the colors, this really enables you to do that. Because it's a core set, though, I tend not to pick them very early because generally you can stick to just two color and you really don't have to worry about fixing as much. Um, that being said, if you're in these colors, definitely pick it up. It's a great solid pick. It just makes your deck that much more efficient. Uh, and efficiency wins games. Gen genuinely, it does. So it's nice to have, but it's not as good as pacifism. Uh, and I believe, yeah, we did get a foil here. Distress. Uh, is two black for a sorcery target player reveals his or her hand and you choose a non-land card from it that player discards that card actually not terrible just because it's only two mana uh, I don't love it if I'm going to be honest but if I'm in a black deck like just a value maybe control e or control ish style deck uh, I'd be okay with it but I think honestly it's a very easy pacifism in my mind that card is just so so good so so great at removing really big threats 
Uh, and that's exactly what you want to do. You just want to be able to, to outpace your opponent and deal with all their stuff. So pacifism, definitely the pick in my opinion. If you disagree, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Cracker Pack episode.